I'm super excited today because I've just received the brand new High Glam Powder Foundation from Natasha Denona and I cannot wait to try this one. She's been promising us a foundation for so long so I really can't wait to see this one, what this is like on my skin, especially because this series so far has been such a huge success for me. And I'll be trying it with the High Gen Serum Primer. And also on one side of my face, I will be applying the new Beautifier so we can see if this gives a bit of a glow underneath the surface. I'll just do this one side so we can see with and without. And I'll be using these High Glam concealers underneath as well. So this will be a full High Glam High Gen look. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Hannah. I'm 47. I'm not a professional, just somebody who really, really loves beauty and everything to do with makeup. Here on my channel, I like to review for you new products, show you some of my favourite looks and give you any beauty news I think you might enjoy. If you think this is something you'd enjoy watching, please do like and subscribe below. And if you comment below, that really is super helpful to me. And my skin tone is fair to light with neutral undertones and I've got combination skin which is mostly dry but I do get an oily t-zone. That's enough about me, let's get on to this video. So here she is. This launched just this week on Wednesday and believe it or not it got to me here in the UK on Friday. This costs £54 but you can get a refill for £39. I really, really like this compact. I think it's very neat. The mirror stands up so you can use this. Very neat, very sleek. Really like the packaging on this. And then when you lift this up you've got the cushion here underneath. So here is the cushion and that's that sort of velvety sponge material you might already be familiar with but it does feel slightly different so I'm definitely going to try this today. And with the refill you just pop the, your finger underneath here and push through and the whole unit lifts out completely so you can just easily pop a new one in. So that really is very, very simple. So this is vegan, talc free, cruelty free and made in Italy. So being talc free this could be quite promising for me especially if you have dry skin because talc can be so drying. So for me most of my skin is dry so I will be really interested to see how this wears on my skin and hopefully it will not exaggerate any dry areas of my face and hopefully it won't cake up as well but we will see. I will do a full wear test for this for you today. So this is launched with 36 shades, so it's got quite a good comprehensive shade range for you. And according to this, it has a blurring flex tech hybrid powder, which will deliver poreless, oil-controlled, perfected second skin finish, whilst caring for your skin at the same time. So this should be good for dry and oily, presumably, hopefully. And it says the sponge is called a high lux sponge, which will ensure minimal product absorption for a flawless application and a natural finish. This gives you a matte finish. It gives medium and buildable coverage. It protects your skin against environmental stresses and it supports skin's natural elasticity and hydration and it's anti-inflammatory. So this is ticking all the boxes at the moment for everything I need because I have an oily t-zone which I do want controlled but I also have dry skin so I do want that skincare that this is promising and I like something that's medium coverage and I like things that are buildable so I'm going to test all of those things out for you now. So firstly let's try this on and then later we can see how it wears. And I've gone for shade N2 which is fair light neutral. I'm hoping this will work. I'm not sure at the moment looking at it to be honest, so we'll just have to wait and see. And the way I chose this was on the Natasha Denona website, there is a shade finder and you can put in your top matches with other foundations. So I put in three and this was the one that came out. I actually got three different recommendations, but as I started adding it started changing. So this is the one I've gone for because it said neutral, but I was actually recommended the cool with my first option. So. Will this one be a bit too warm? I don't know. I'll just have to see. So I'm going to start now with the High Gen Serum Primer. I'm going to put this just on one side of my face because as I said at the start of the video, I will be using the Beautifier on the other side with the serum combined to see how that works. Now this is a quite a glowy primer as you can see on its own without the Beautifier added. This is a primer that's actually quite new to me. I literally just bought it the other week to test out the Beautifier. 
because Natasha recommended using the two together so I'm not overly experienced with this one because I'm just starting to practice with it but I do know that using quite a moisturising primer underneath a powder foundation really works well for me. And because this is a matte powder foundation, I do want to get a bit of radiance to come through. So we'll see if this serum alone can provide that, but now we'll see if the serum with the beautifier can do that. So here's my beautifier in shade 01 Light. And as Natasha recommended, I'm going to put the serum directly on top two drops like that and then going in with the BK Beauty 106 and basically swirling this around in here and now applying it to this side of the face so this side should be an awful lot more shiny and when I first tested this out and I tried it underneath just the concealer actually and then powdered down I was really quite impressed with the finish because it did give me a nice glow that came through now when you apply it like this originally the first layer I think it looks way too shiny I would never wear it just like this but when you add your products on top and a bit of powder I really like the way that this gave quite a natural glow that came through so there's the side with the beautifier and there's the side without you can see I'm getting quite a good glow just off the serum itself just a little bit more with this I wouldn't say it's massively noticeable though anyway so now going in with the high glam concealer and I would always put a concealer on first before starting with a powder foundation this one is N3 which is the shade I like to use under my eyes for a bit of colour correction and on my eyelids and using my BK Beauty A506 just tapping this in and this shade may seem a little deep for me but I just like the way that it has that colour correcting property because I don't like to layer a colour corrector and a concealer if I can avoid it. And for me this shade with this concealer pretty much does both those jobs and if I do want to brighten up I can use a light powder underneath. And I'm going to go in with N1 now which is the lighter one and I'm just going to put this in all the areas where I normally put a lighter concealer and I would normally be layering this on top of foundation as more of a brightener than a, con a concealer. I don't really know if this is going to show up much but I'm going to do it anyway. Now what I might do now is go in with a cream contour or bronzer and even a cream blush because it might be good to layer beneath this but I'm not going to do that today I'm just telling you what I would normally maybe do with a powder not always but sometimes but I'm, today I just want to leave it at this so you can really see what this is going to do to my skin. So at the moment my cheeks are completely uncovered. There's nothing concealing this area here where I have a bit of redness. So I want to see what the coverage is really. So it's going to be just directly on. I think that's a bit better for today. But later in the month when I'm using this, if you catch me in any other videos, I will definitely try that method so you can see the alternative ways of using this. So here we go, I'm going to go in with this sponge, which I must say feels exceptionally smooth, really, really nice. So I'm going to take a good swipe across and let's see what happens. Well, the shade match is quite good actually. I'm quite pleased with the shade match. I was a bit worried, but I think it's actually pretty spot on. So the shade matcher did quite well there. And now my forehead, which has got quite a bit of pink this morning. And I've got to be honest, I'm not sure how I feel about applying with this. I will persist, but I think I'll use a brush on the other side just because I'm not sure if I'm getting the sort of even application I get with a brush. At the moment I would say this is leaning on the slightly below medium coverage, but we will see if it's buildable. So I'm now going to try and build it up here. I think it is 
a bit. I wouldn't say massively. I don't know, I'm feeling a little bit underwhelmed if I'm really honest at the moment. But it is it is sitting very nicely on my skin, I can say that, because quite often with powder foundations, as soon as I apply them, especially say to the chin, which is where I get most of my problems, it can look cakey straight away and it needs to be really worked in. Now I'm not getting that, so it's a very smooth application. I think it's just going to depend how it looks when I finish. I'm going to try this under the eye, even though I do think this is a little bit too deep for under the eye, but I want to see if it will work. I'm going to pat this rather than smooth it across. It would be good to have a powder that can do all of those things. I'm yet to find any powder foundation that works under my eyes. That is actually not too bad at all under my eyes. I'm quite impressed with that actually. Yeah. Apart from the fact that I'd probably like to have a lighter shade for under the eye, that's the only thing, but that's not too bad, you know. So there's the one side of the face with the powder. You can see here my veins and everything are really visible. I don't know if I can put... See, so you can put more. You saw then the layer that went on. So it can be built up. That is better actually, isn't it? feel like I'm putting a lot on, but yeah, that definitely built up. Okay, so there is one side with and one side without. You can certainly see all the shine on this side of my face and it's taken the shine down. Whether you can still see any of that shine coming through from the beautifier, I'm not sure. I think it will depend on the finished look. I'm going to use my BK Beauty 105 brush, which I love for powder foundations, and I'm going to do this on the other side. Oh yeah, prefer that straight away. I never really get on that well with these cushion applicators that they put into powder foundation. They're okay for touch-ups, but that's it for me. I don't think the overall application is as good as you get with a brush. And this brush is brilliant. Oh yeah, and it's so much quicker as well because I felt like I was doing it for ages with the sponge provided, but this so quick and so smooth. This brush actually made powder foundations work for me, honestly, it's so, so good. I wasn't really sure about a few of them and then I tried it with this brush and I was like, oh, I like that. So this brush I highly recommend. Oh yeah. So now we can see if I build up a bit here. there. So it is definitely buildable. When you build it, it doesn't seem to be layering sort of pow thick powder either, which is quite impressive. Because I feel like I'm going a bit mad with the amount I'm applying. But on the skin, it doesn't feel like I've put a lot on. It feels light. So that in itself is quite impressive. And there's absolutely no sign of caking. So at the moment, if you're a fan of matte powder foundation, I think this could be a winner because I really think this is applied very, very well. Now I will use the applicator for ends of the eye because it is such a good shape for it. That is something it definitely works for. It's not bad under the eyes, but I am thinking my lines here, I'm seeing fine lines that I don't normally see, so I don't think it works that well under the eyes now. This side looks horrible actually. I'll just go in with a buffer brush to see if I can just make it a bit more fine. That's a little bit better, but I don't know if you can see what I mean. You can just see so many lines there, and obviously I have plenty, but I can see more than usual, so I don't think I'll be using this under the eyes again. 
but if you're in a rush and you wanted a really quick look it, it's not it's not bad at all but it could be a bit better that's all it's just but at the moment for my skin I think I've got quite a perfected base really I'm getting no caking signs whatsoever I'm really quite impressed now I said I was underwhelmed I think that was to do with the application with a sponge because at the moment now I'm quite happy with this Anyway, I'm going to go on to do the rest of my makeup. I'm going to apply all powder and then you can see how my finished look is looking on top of this new foundation. So I'll see you then. So I've now finished all of my makeup and I have to say this is sitting beautifully. I've gone in with a 10 times magnification and I have absolutely no sign whatsoever of caking in my most trouble zone. Now my top foundations tend to cake even the tiniest little bit here and sometimes my oils come through and that improves during the day but this is not showing any signs of that at all so at the moment this is sitting really really beautifully on the surface of my skin and I've got to say I really like the perfected finish I've got. I don't think the beautifier has come through much on this side but I do think that I've got enough of a sort of natural glow coming through. I don't really see a difference between the two sides, I don't know what you think. So this is the side with just the primer and this is the side with the primer and the beautifier underneath. I don't think it's doing anything but what I have done is I've put the beautifier on the surface in my normal highlight areas which you'll see. I really like this, I think it's such a natural beautiful highlighter, very mature skin friendly and this powder is coming across very mature skin friendly I don't feel like my texture is being exaggerated or highlighted at all I think it's not sitting in the lines here I think it's, it's sitting beautifully on my face it really really is so considering I have mostly dry skin certainly around there and the outside of my face and I'm 47 I think this is working brilliantly on my skin at the moment so I'm really really happy with this one thing I'll just do a quick test with is I want to see if you can get cream products to sit on the surface of this so I've got a cream blush here I don't particularly need any more blush but I just wanted to see can I apply a cream product on top and the answer to that seems to be yes. That's gone on very nicely actually. No patchiness. So that's another good sign. This is something I will obviously need to test further. Yeah, there we are. That's not gone on. That's gone on very nicely. No patchiness. So there we go. That's passed that test as well. I will definitely be trying this out. I'll make this my main foundation for the week so that I can give a more comprehensive um, roundup for you. I don't know if I'll include this in my end of month because it's so close to the end of the month. I think I'll let this one roll over until my favourites for May update video for you. So I'd rather use this for the whole month so I can give you little updates throughout the month as I'm using it with other products but on the whole I will be giving you that full update at the end of May because I think that would be better. Obviously you can ask me any time if you want to know anything and I can give you updates. But I will now leave you and I'll be back for a midday check-in and for an evening check-in to see how this is wearing. At the moment, I love this, really happy with it. So we don't have any nice weather or sunshine for me to show you this in bright lights, but I just wanted you to see this outdoors, how it's looking. Sorry, that's my cat down there, Maggie. <laughs> yeah here it is outdoors in minimal sunlight so this is my four hour check-in i've just been looking here in my magnification mirror just switching the light off on that and it's looking exactly the same it's my possibly my oils have come through a tiny bit tiny bit only in a good way though i think it's just you can see my radiance a tiny tiny bit more but it's not caking anywhere. It's still looking really good here. I'm very pleased with it at the moment. It's, every time I look in a mirror outside of this room, so in a different light, say my bathroom mirror, which is probably my most critical mirror, 
I think I've got quite an airbrush look, one of the best sort of airbrush looks I've had in a long time. Even more so than when I had the Tom Ford Architect foundation I think, it's given me an even more perfected finish. I really like it actually, I really do. I can see me opting for this one a lot. It's so easy to apply with that brush and I just love the way it's looking. So my four hour wear, as you've seen, I've been out in those horrible conditions outside and I've just done a bit around the house. I've had a couple of coffees, I've had my um, breakfast and that's about it really. I can't say I've done anything too exciting to really challenge it out as in anything very active. But yeah, this is how it's looking after four hours. So at the moment it's really holding up really, really, really well. I'm sorry about my um, daytime check-in, which was <laughs> just awful. But anyway, I wanted you to see it in that light anyway. So at least it gives you some idea of how this, this looks in different light settings. So I'll see you now for the eight hour check-in tonight. It might be a bit later than eight hours, but anyway, it will definitely be at least eight hours. You can see how this one really lasts. I'll see you then. So it is now just past the eight hour mark. I've been sitting here waiting so, so desperately because I want to get this video out today. I really do. So hopefully I can get this uploaded for you so you can see it today on Saturday. And the results of this wear test are that it pretty much still looks exactly the same. The only thing I can see in the magnification mirror is, I don't know if you can see it, tiny, tiny dot there where it seems to have clung to something dry on my face there. And if I look at my trouble area here around my nose, there is a little bit of caking it's so minute I can hardly see it. I had to really really look closely. I'll try and show you up a bit closer. I doubt you can even see it on camera. It is so minimal. It's basically less than I would expect it to be with a normal foundation with first application, never mind end of day application. And as for keeping my oils at bay, well I haven't used my primer that I always use, the Danessa Myrex one that keeps my oils locked in. So I've actually got that primer which is actually moisturising, which doesn't help at all with me with oils when I use a moisturising primer. So the only thing locking my oils in right now is this foundation. And as you can see, there's no sign of oil at all. It's not sticky to the touch. Nothing whatsoever has come through. There's no sticky anywhere. The shine is not worse than it was earlier. When I say worse, it wasn't bad anyway. There's just a little bit of natural radiance, which I think the primer has probably given me. But apart from that, it is it really has stayed the same. And I've had my meal, which was a little bit messy, and my chin is intact, which is very unusual. It hasn't shifted off my chin. I did use the um, Charlotte Tilbury setting spray, so that's worth noting. I always use that. So this is how it's lasted after eight hours. And I've got to say, this is what, probably the best wear test I've done this year. In fact, easily the best. I mean, I've had some really good results this year. I've got to be honest, Tom Ford was really good and the Gucci foundation was really good. But if you're gonna go for the most perfect eight hour check-in, then this is the one for me. This for me is, from trying it today, this is just the first try, but this one for me would be the one I would use if I really wanted to guarantee a locked in look. So if I was leaving the house in the morning and I was going to be out all day and I wanted to look really good all day with no concern of touch ups, this would be my current choice because it's really worked fantastically. I'm, I'm really pleased with it, really, really pleased. It's phenomenal. I can't wait to keep trying this. So as it stands, I definitely recommend it. But obviously I'd like to try this out over the week, so it's definitely worth checking. I think what I'll do is I'll pop a comment and pin it to the top of this video. So look out for that if I notice any changes. So as things stand, it's perfect. But if I come across any problems with it, I will definitely do that rather than making you wait a month until my end of May review. So keep an eye on this video and look for the pinned comment. And if there's no pinned comment, you know there's no change. 
but if I do come across a change with this for me I'll definitely let you know but I mean I can't tell you if you're greasy skinned or very dry skinned because I'm somewhere in the middle but what I can tell you is my dry areas apart from this tiny little bit there which is it's a bit hard to say whether it's a spot whether it's just some sort of hormonal thing I don't know but it's, it's minuscule but my dryness generally hasn't affected it hasn't gone dry anywhere else it's looking great everywhere and as for the oily t-zone which has been a problem for me for the past year no oils coming through absolutely none so that sort of suggests to me that this would suit dry and oily and combination but obviously I'm combination so I can't really speak for the oily and dry people so I'd love to hear from you if you try this, how you find it. I really would, and anyone watching this might find it helpful. If you could say in the comments how you got on with it, if you've got very oily or very dry, rather than just combination like me. But obviously I'd love to hear from you either way, because it's great chatting about these products and, and sharing notes. So this has been another winner. This really is turning into the best year, I think, ever for me with Try and Makeup. I've had so many successes this year. And Natasha Denona just never seems to disappoint me. So this is absolutely fabulous. And I'm over the moon. <laughs> so there we go. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I would really love to chat with you below in the comment section. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, I would love it so much if you did. And if you already are, then thank you so much for returning. And I hope to see all of you for my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.